by Dallas, make it hurt. In today's video, we will be discussing the secrets of the Torah of the Sages. The Torah itself, at its highest level, describes the construction of the worlds prior to existence. The sages have alluded to this in certain statements, as in the Zohar, in which it says in Book 9 that the Torah preceded existence by 200 years. So, today we will be analyzing a piece of that. There was a great Kabbalist by the name of Yitzhak Luria. And he, after many, many, many years of living near river and studying the Zohar in Egypt, came out and ended up traveling on command of the Malachim in Eliyahu to teach certain mysteries to a person named Chaim Vital. He gave to him very cryptic information to at which first he could not understand. But what you're looking at are parts of him that describe the different interactions. What I'd like to share with you guys today is where they derived this from the Torah and how they derived it from the Torah. So with that being said, let us begin. This is the tree for the parts of him called Zer on Pin. And behind us on the scroll is the exact same thing. This is the parts of called Zer on Pin. So Zer on Pin is being constructed throughout the totality of Genesis. We see it being interacted with in Chesed as in terms of Abraham and his story because it's written in Chesed to Abraham. And we see in Gevura and the secret of Yitzhak. And now Tifreth is the secret of Yaakov. So this is our interaction point. We're interacting at the points of the story of Yaakov. And he personifies the fear of Tifreth. And this is alluded to where it's written that he smelled like a field blessed by Hashem. Smelled alludes to the nose, which is the fear of Tifreth. Just like Gevura, which is Isaac, was dimly sighted because the eyes allude to the spheres of Chesed and Gevura. So, the general progression of the story so far as it's being delineated here is at the point of Yaakov, which is the construction of the Tifreth of Zeranpin. I will explain to you guys the particulars on how the brains are developing and where they're deriving this from. So with that being said, let us get into the second part. For those of you that have a copy of book four, it is explained there in Technical Gate 49, The Keys of Genesis, the individual breakdown of each part to theme. For example, it's written Chesed to Abraham. Well, Abraham is called father. And this alludes to the sphere of Hokmah called Father. So Abraham personifies the Hokmah within the sphere of Chesed. And his wife personifies Sarah. This is Bina, which is the sphere called Elohim, in which the letter Shin alludes to the name of Elohim if you were to spell its letters out. The Resh alludes to the name of Elohim if you were to triangulate it. Aleph, Aleph, Lamed, Aleph, Lamed, Hey. The value of all of these letters is 200. And the hey of her name alludes to the five letters of Elohim itself. So the name of his wife personifies Bina with inside of the sphere of Chesed. Now the Zohar says, I am without a son, I am naked, alluding to the fact that the child alludes to garment. The garment level, if you remember from the prior video, I discussed the different levels, and one of them is called garment. This refers to Zoran Pin. Thus, Ishmael represents the lower six of the parts of Chesed. 
and Hagar represents the Malkut of the sphere of Chesed. Yitzhak personifies the Hokma of Gevura because he's called father as well. Rivka, his wife, personifies the sphere of Bina. Esav personifies the lower six of Gevura. And the heel, which is also called the field, is called Oket. This is Malkuth. Thus we find Yaakov is also called father. He personifies the Hokma of its respective parts of. But there is no female listed, so we are within Tifereth, mainly the first third, the first portion within the Sephir of Tifereth. And this is where all of the interactions are going to be occurring. So, according to the story, Yaakov was grasping onto the heel of Esau. That's because the heel of Esau represents the Malkuth of Gavura. And it's connected to the Kether of Tiferet. Kether reveals itself in Hokum, that Sha'akov was grasping the heel. So we'll discuss what is occurring and the Partsus and some of the keys. We can see this exact interaction here, in which, according to the Partsus, the upper third of Tiferet is being interacted with. As it was just delineated there, we see the part of Yaakov is emerging from this place. It is to the right side. Why? Because he personifies the right aspect, mainly the Hokma, with inside of that Sphira. Therefore, he is emanating out to the right side. But we will soon look at this in terms of another key. We can also see this in the Sod of Genesis, in which it states in which it states that Yaakov stole the heart. So we see the interactions are between Yaakov and Esau, or Tifreth and Gevura. Now, Rivka, the wife, represents Bina within Gevura because Bina emanates Gevura and descends into Hod. So, during the interaction of the story that we learn in the Torah, the interactions are Bina within Gavura is interacting with Tifreth, which is Yaakov. It has been explained that Esau are the lower six. For this reason, he could not be blessed, because the blessing refers to base, which is Bina. Resh Rashis Hokma Kaf is Kather. Because Yaakov himself is the Hokma of Tifreth, he receives the blessing and not Esau. He only represents the lower six of Gavura. In the secret in Book 9 of the Zohar, where it says, A brother is born for adversity, it represents the, the lower states of Zoranpin within the sphere. So, Yaakov receives the garment from Rivka, is blessed by Yitzhak, in which he says, you smell like a field, blessed by Hashem. Smell is the aspect of the nose, which again is alluding to the sphere of Tiferet. He travels on the command of Rivka to Haran, to Laven. Laven means white, that's the sphere of Hokma. And Bina says, this is my brother. Abraham, who represents Hokma of Chesed, said the same thing of Sarah. This is my sister. So, when the Shefa was at the position of Bina, it traveled to the position of Hokma to be established and rectified to draw down the lights. For Zorayin Pin had only been constructed to the point of Tifreth so far. On the way to Hokma, the stone is placed under the head and a ladder called Yaakov's Ladder. 
whose bottom reached earth, top to the heavens. So, this eludes the sphere of Malkuth interacting with Tifra. We see this because the stone is either at the heel, which is the sphere of Malkuth, in which it's called a stumbling block or rock of offense. It's at the level called heart, which refers to Zerain Peen, in which it's called a heart of stone or it's under the head. The secret of Yaakov's ladder. This is the sword of the verse, I will lift up your name, Malkuth, above the heavens, Zerain Peen, to the where? Sphere of Da'as, O Elohim, in which this place was called House of Elohim. And from there, he travels to Laven. Now, Laven represents the sphere of Chokmah. It's written, Wisdom built a house with seven pillars, and so Yaakov will be here for seven years. And he'll be there for another seven years, because the Sephirot have fronts and backs, which are the orders of his sons and his daughters, in the instance of Dina. So, let us return to the parts of interaction at hand. Laven represents within the sphere of Chokmah. And we're discussing Zorin Pin in his construction at the points of Tiferet. In the Partsufim that's being shown, we're seeing Ima and Abba. So, the Yisad of Ima is personified within the secret of Rivka, and the Yisad of Abba is contained within it. For this reason, Yaakov goes through. Rivka to Laven because she's the outer vessel and Laven is the inner vessel. So why are we dealing with the Netzach Hod in Yisad? And why are we dealing with the Hokmah Bina in Da'as? Because the Netzach Hod in Yisad of one world is the Hokmah Bina in Da'as of the next world. So within the construct of Zerayin Pin, his Hokmah Bina and Da'as are formed out of the Netzach Hod and Yisod of the Partsufims of Ima and Abba. And then because it's written, Ima and Abba personifying Hokmah Bina, because it's written wisdom in understanding, the vessels are accordingly. And because it's written in the secret of his right hand embraces me, we see it's the inner light is Abba and the outer light is Ima. For this reason, Ima personifying these aspects, and how can we know for a fact we know because in Gavura, she represents Bina. And as a result of this, this by default is the Hod of the next world. So Netzach, Hod, and Yisod of Ima and Abba in this point of the story of the Torah are interacting with the Hokmah Bina and Da'as of Zerayin Pin in terms of correction. We're dealing with the upper third of Tifereth because I explained that Yaakov is the Hokmah. And it emerges on the right side for the exact same reason. So the interactions that are as follows are in the secret of them being go to my brother, which is siblings. This alludes to us again, that's our code in Yisod. It was just explained the interactions and how they relate to Bina, Hokma, and Da'as, which are correspondingly in the development of the Mohin, for child develops. It develops first when it's born at the level of the chest of the mother. And then later, it speaks to the mother. So, Zerayin Pin being a completely masculine Partsufim, when the Netzach Hod and Yisad became the Hokma Bina and Da'as, which is the interaction we're having, we see alluded to here. I explained to you guys that Bina is Rivka, and that's because Rivka is the Hod or a sibling. Laven as well. And on the way there, he stops and places a stone under his head. The stone is the Sephir of Malkuth and the secret of, I will lift up your name above the heavens, O Elohim. This, what it causes to emerge, is the parts of him called Leah. He called this place House of Elohim, which means the lower seven, because later he would be interacting with it in Hokma when it's built. But first, pillars are gathered, then it's constructed. This is alluded to when he calls it House of Elohim, for house is built with seven pillars. Those seven are the aspects of Leah that emerge. 
And we know this because Leia is a permutation of Elo, from Elohim. When he travels to Hokma, when he travels to Laban, it is written, Wisdom built a house with seven pillars, so he serves there seven years and seven years. This is also the place where Israel is derived. And this is very important that the children of Israel are derived from the sphere of Hokma. Because later on, when you calculate from the levels of Asiya, which is one to 10, and then the 10 to 100, then hundreds, then thousands and 10 thousands, you'll find that they're 12 thousands. So it, he personifies that Rachel emerges from this point of Tiferes. For this reason, Yaakov and, and Rachel were paired for each other. Why? Because she emerges from the left facing the left and he emerges from the right facing the right. He's the secret of Yod, the secret of Hokma. Why he goes there to establish Okav, to bring his children back to his own aspect, to begin the construction of the lower portion. Rachel is of the left, but they face each other, if they face each other. So this is the thought of this verse. And it says, and Rachel stole the teraphim that were her father's, and Yaakov stole the heart of Laban. Because the lights that are interacting are the lights of Laban and Rivka, which represent the Netzach, Hod and Yisod of Ima, and the Netzach, Hod and Yisod of Abba, in which the Netzach, Hod and Yisod of Ima are Rivka's partsuf, the Netzach, Hod and Yisod of Abba are Laban's partsuf. For this reason, he stole Laban's heart literally, because the position of the light of Yisod of Abba, which is descending to the position of Tiferet, causes Yaakov to emerge at that place. And the rest of it flows out in the feminine aspect, which is the secret of the Teraphim, and the partsuf of Rachel. And because they're mentioned at the same time, they occur at the same place. So this verse is the secret of Yaakov and Rachel emerging at this exact position. And I've already explained how Da'as emerged in the secret of the dream. And on the scroll, it is personified the exact same partsuf, in which we can see the partsufim on the top right of Israel Saba and on the left of Israel Tavuna, and above them are Abba and Ima, and how their lower aspects create the Hokma Bina and Da'as. So the Netzar Kodi Sod create the Hokma Bina and Da'as of Zerain Pin. And out of the Da'as of Zerain Pin from the left side emerges the partsuf called Leah. And out of the Tifereth emerges the partsuf called Rachel. And on the right side, the partsuf that's called Yaakov. And this entire section of the scroll, if you guys have seen it before, is discussing a commentary on Bereshis, in which we see here the partsuf of the maidens and so on and so forth. So of this, it is stated that the Torah existed before existence. And the sages have entered into the higher worlds through the Torah. It is written, Son of man, measure the dimensions of the temple. Son of man alludes to the Sephira of Tiferet and alludes to Zorin Pin, which is a level called written Torah. And the dimensions of the temple are the mother's Torah. And the only way to reveal this is to unite the oral Torah with the written Torah then the dimensions of the upper worlds are constructed and then they will enter into it. And this is the sod of a very secret portion in Book 9. I'll share it with you. It's written in Book 9, Rabbi Shimon said, During that time, blessed are those who will remain in the world. Who are they? Come and behold. There will not remain any in the world except those who are circumcised. And I explained to you guys that circumcision is the eighth day as is written seven days under the mother, mother's the eighth sphere called Bina. On the eighth day of fire offering to Hashem, it's written your Torah is a fire, a train of fire goes out of the throne. All this alludes to the sphere of Bina, the mother's Torah, the construct Torah, 
Son of Man, measure the dimensions of the temple. Who accepted the Holy Covenant, and I reveal to you where it's written. Write down these words, and by the mouth of these words I will make a covenant with you. This is the Oral Torah. When the Oral Torah is united with the written Torah, the temple may be entered. For man did not build the temple, but Hashem. And entered into the two parts of the Holy Covenant, namely the covenant and circumcision. And so then it says, how do we know this? From the words, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, which means the oral Torah, called Zion, Malkuth, and he that remains in Jerusalem, this refers to the mother's Torah, in which the temple is in Jerusalem, shall be called holy, everyone in Jerusalem that is written to life. Why? Because Jerusalem represents the mother's Torah, the sphere of Bina. And because it draws down the light of emanation, which is Chaya, life, from Chokmah, it is called, it says here, it is called holy, everyone in Jerusalem that is written to life. It is understood from he that is left in Zion, the oral Torah, and he that remains in Jerusalem, the mother's Torah, that everyone who is circumcised attains these two levels, because if you're at the eighth day, if you're in the mother's Torah, then you're master of the oral Torah already. You've already been in Zion. After the story of Yaakov, we then have Yosef, which is in the sphere of Yisod. So if you guys would like a follow-up video on this particular type of content, then leave a comment down below. But what's been revealed today is seldom if ever talked about and only alluded to about in very obscure ways and very obscure places. For those of you that have a copy of book four already, I provided the gate earlier in the video. And if you guys would like to obtain a copy of the fourth book and read for yourself, you may do so in the link down below in the description box. With that being said, ponder carefully the words of the Torah. Shalom, Selah.